classifying the joints into various categories. First of all, we need to learn what is a joint. Joint is the place where two skeletal structures meet with each other. It could be a bone to bone, bone to a cartilage. Now, the joints can be categorized broadly under three subheadings, and these are the fibrous type of joint, cartilaginous type of joint, and synovial type of joints. The fibrous joint, where we don't have any movement, they are immobile. And then we'll come to the cartilaginous joint, there is slight mobility. And the third variant is a synovial joint, and a synovial joint, there we have freedom of movement. Now you are looking at a skull cap and what we are targeting here. Can you see these different colors of the bones? These are the bones who contribute in making my skull cap. And this yellow thing is the frontal bone and these are the parietal bones. And if you can see the line going in between, this is called sutures. So these sutures are an example of fibrous type of joint. Now compare the two skulls. This is an adult and this is a beginning of the life and you can see these sutures have not fused with each other and there's a gap in between. Now you're looking at the bones which are present in my leg and in my foot. These bones are tibia and fibula. What I'm trying to show you here, I want to show you here a membranous structure which is connecting the two borders of my tibia and fibula and this membrane is an example of another type of fibrous joint and that is known as syndesmosis. Now you can see here each tooth is being impacted within its socket and that is another example of fibrous type of joint which is occurring inside and this example is known as gomphosis. So we have learned the fibrous joint is the place where we don't have any movement and the examples were explained suture, gomphosis and syndesmosis. Now the second variety is the cartilages joints and cartilages joints are of two types. One is primary cartilages joint and other one is secondary cartilages joints. Primary cartilages joints allow no movement and the example what we can see here the place where my rib articulate with this costal cartilage this is one of the example of primary cartilages type of joint. Now we will be looking at the secondary cartilages joint and right now what has been shown to you you are looking at the vertebral column you can see there is a disc which is present between the bodies of two vertebrae. This is an example of intervertebral joint and the articulating surfaces are lined by hyaline cartilage and in between we have this fibrocartilage disc and this joint allows minimal movement. And this is the example, one of the example of secondary cartilages joint and these joints are located within the midline. The other examples are symphysis pubis. Now we are looking at pubic symphysis. This is the place where my two pubic bones, they join in the midline in front. And this is also an example of secondary cartilages joint. Now we are looking at ball and socket type of synovial joint and I am sure everybody can see very clearly this ball like structure which is head of the femur and this is the acetabular cavity which is located in my hip bone. Now you can see the same ball and socket type of joint which was an example of a hip joint, the bony articulations and there you can see the same with the ligaments which are located all across this joint. Now you are looking at the humerus bone which is present in my arm and the scapula. 
and the articulation in between these two bones is another example of ball and socket type of joint and similar to the previous one this joint also have freedom of movement and we can go in multiple direction now you're looking at same shoulder joint or glenohumeral joint the bones and there you can see the ligaments which are visible to you who are contributing in making glenohumeral joint now here you are looking at the two examples of my synovial joints this one is a hinge type of joint you can see the lower end the trochlear part where it's going and articulating with the ulna bone and on the other side you can see an articulation between the radius and the capitulum this is a pivot type and this is a hinge type now you can compare the same the bony articulation shown and the articulation shown with the help of different ligaments and you're looking at a hinge type and a pivot type now you're looking at another example of a synovial joint and this is the joint where you, where you can see here the lower end of the femur and upper end of the tibia and this articulation is named as knee joint this joint is an example of a modified hinge joint why we call it a modified hinge joint because this has flexion extension that is in one axis and also there is rotationary movement so there basically there are two type of movements which are occurring here and there you can see the same joint there you are looking at the bony articulation and there you can see the different kind of ligaments who contribute in making my knee joint and this knee joint is an example of a modified hinge joint it is different from my normal hinge joint hinge joint allows only movement in one direction uniaxial but here the movements are in two axes that's why is an example of a biaxial type of a joint now we are looking at at the wrist joint here with the only the bones and there you can see the ligaments are also covering the bones this wrist joint is an example of ellipsoid type of joint and at this joint we have movement occurring in two directions so it is an example of a biaxial type of a joint we can have flexion extension as well as radial and ulnar deviation now we are looking at first carpo metacarpal joint occurring at my thumb this is a classic example of saddle type of joint and this also falls under the category of biaxial type of a joint there you can see the bare bones here you can see the ligaments who surround this joint let's summarize joints can be classified into fibrous cartilages and synovial joints let's look at the fibrous joints so the fibrous joint the first example is suture where we can find the suture this is a structure and we can find in the skull cap look at these bones and their articulations the second example is my tooth socket where my tooth has been plugged in and that is known as gomphosis and my tooth has been attached adhere with the socket through a very strong ligament called periodontal ligament the third variant is syndesmosis where we can find it we can find this in between the bones of my forearm or a bone of my leg between my radius and ulna or tibia and fibula and this is an example of syndesmosis so all these three suture gomphosis and syndesmosis are the example of a fibrous type of joint and will not have any type of movement occurring at these joints now let's look at the cartilages joint and the first variant of cartilages joint is the primary cartilages joint and we are looking at these two examples 
and let's look at these dotted lines. So what are these dotted lines? This is basically where my epiphysis fuse with the metaphysis part of my diaphysis bone and this is occurring at the end of my long bone and after this epiphyseal plate has fused. So this is an example of a primary cartilaginous joint and second one where my rib is making a joint with the costal cartilage. Secondary cartilaginous joints, they occur in the midline of the body and they are more specialized because what we have the hyaline cartilage who covers the articulating surfaces of the bone and in between we have a layer of a fibrocartilage and the example what we can see here there you can see the intervertebral joint and there you can see a disc in between the two vertebral bodies. The other examples they include pubic symphysis. Then we are looking at a synovial joint. When we talk of this word a synovial joint there is free movement, freedom of movement, movement. So there are basically basic constituents of a joint to be called as synovial joint. Let's look at some of those examples what is necessary. So we need to have two bones and their ends who are making a joint that they should be congruent to each other. They should be made for each other and then their articulating surfaces should be lined by hyaline type of cartilage. Then the joint should be surrounded by a thick fibrous capsule and then inside there it is lined by a membrane and this membrane is called synovial membrane. This membrane does not cover the articulating surfaces and the job of this membrane is to liberate a fluid and that is known as synovial fluid and you can see there is a cavity which is surrounded by this fibrous capsule and this cavity is filled by this fluid which is synovial fluid and this is a very viscous fluid which helps the freedom of the movements. Now what are the basic constituents which are a must for a joint to be called as a typical synovial joint. So we need to have the articulating ends of the bone and they should be covered by hyaline cartilage. The second variant, the joint should be surrounded by a capsule. There should be a joint cavity and this cavity, this capsule should be reinforced externally or internally by ligaments. Then we have this joint cavity should be lined by a membrane that is synovial membrane and joint must permit different degrees of movements and if this hyaline cartilage which lines the articulating surfaces if it changes to fibrocartilage then this joint will be no more called as a typical synovial joint it will become an atypical synovial joint. So these six criteria are a must for a synovial joint to stay as a typical synovial joint. Now let's look at the examples. So my synovial joint can be classified on the basis of shape and also on the basis of the function. So first example I'm bringing here is a hinge and you're looking at a hinge and it says itself look at this is an example of my elbow joint and this elbow joint is uniaxial type of a joint because movement is only possible at my elbow is flexion and extension. The second variant within this hinge we have a modified hinge. What's that? The example is my knee joint and what movements are occurring here at my knee joint? We have flexion extension and rotatory movements are also occurring. So that makes this joint as a biaxial type but this we don't call it a hinge we call it a modified hinge joint. Now look at a pivot type of joint. What is this pivot? Pivot is something merry-go-round a circular movement along an axis and the examples are my proximal radio ulnar joint or my atlanto axial joint and 
This is also an example of uniaxial type of a joint. Ball and socket type of joint is classic and we can see movements occurring along all the axes. So, it is an example of multi-axial type of joint and the examples are my hip joint as well as my shoulder joint which is also known as glenohumeral joint. Then this variant ellipsoid. In ellipsoid you can see this the ball and socket now this, this, this ball is bit ovoid oval in shape and the socket has also been adopted to that and movements are occurring in two direction and this classic example is occurring at my wrist joint and this joint is also a biaxial type of joint because movements which are possible here they are flexion extension and then we have radial and ulnar deviation subsequently they lead to circumduction and then this is a variant we call it a saddle type of joint and its example is first carpometacarpal of joint and you can see that the saddle we all know what saddle is and look at these two and movements are also occurring across two joint across two axes and this is where we can see at the base of my thumb and this is also a biaxial type of a joint. Plain synovial joint these joints they occur in between carpal bones and at these joints we have only gliding type of movement. Now let's look at the functional aspect of the joint movements. Fibrous and primary cartilages joints they are immobile. Secondary cartilages joints are slightly mobile and my synovial joints are freely mobile. 